Hello, everybody. Right, let's have a look. What is this shadow graph? So, I am a tennis fan, uh, which I guess is <laughs> evident from the description. And uh, at the beginning of this year, I started like trying to see how good I was at predicting matches. Uh, <laughs> I guess not very good is probably the answer. And so I built this this little app, and so you can kind of see roughly on the screen how it works. Um, so I predict who I think is going to get to each round in a certain position of the draw. And then I put in the result afterwards and then you can kind of see red as I got it wrong and green as I got it right. And so this is from the uh, Australian Open uh, 2022. So this was like in, in January. And then it kind of computes you a score where you get more points at the better of the round. Now, the first version that I did was, was just some JSON files. Uh, so I put some JSON files in GitHub uh, and I had the tournament, I had some metadata about the tournament and then I had the events. So events is because there are uh, men's singles and women's singles. Generally, I'm, I'm not skillful enough to do double, so I didn't try to do that. And then within each uh, one of these, uh, I would then have the actual player that got to a, that particular part of the draw and then the, the one that I thought it was, and then for the other side of the draw as well. And so this is fine. This is all working. It was working for every tournament. And then in about May, um, I showed it to someone and they were like, oh, I want to do this as well. And I was like, oh, I don't know how, I don't know how well my... Uh, my JSON file approach to this is going to scale. So I was talking to Michael Hunger, uh, and he was like, oh, why don't, you, why don't you build a graph out of this? So that is where the talk begins. So we've got to figure out how to convert this into a graph. So some of it is reasonably easy. So we'll, we'll start off with that. So there's a tournament, right? So we can kind of see that at the top. We've got a name of a tournament. We've got a start date. We've got an end date. So, okay. so far, so good. We've got within the tournament, there are multiple events. So it can be like an event is like men's singles. Uh, lady singles, men's doubles, mixed doubles, etc. Within an event, we've then got um, what they call a bracket. And so in a bracket, you have two players. So they are in that particular part of the draw. The reason that it's called a bracket is because this is what it looks like when you view it as part of the draw. So you kind of got like this almost bracket looking thing. And so Berrettini, Nadal, that would be one bracket. And then Sitsipas, Medvedev, that would be another one. And then Nadal, Medvedev would be another one. So those are brackets. So a bracket is kind of the representation of a match uh, that's going to happen. And then we've got the players who actually got um, into that bracket. So in this case, Berrettini and Nadal. And so if we model that, uh, it's not too tricky, right? We're more or less mapping it just how I just how I showed now. So blue represents players. We've kind of got Sitsipas and Medvedev over here, Nadal and Berrettini on the other side. We've got the event sitting in the middle, men's singles. And then uh, below that, we've got the tournament. Um, which is uh, connected to the to, to that event. And then we can have other events as well, right? We can have, all, like there would be a lady singles. I've taken it out of this particular uh, diagram, but there would be lady singles attached on the, on, onto that Australian Open 2022. So that's fine so far, so good. But then it became, okay, well, how are we gonna model the players who I thought were gonna get here? So we've done the players who actually got here. How do we model the players who I thought we're going to get here. Keep it in mind that we want to be able to model it for multiple people. So me and let's say Alex wanted to compete and Michael, we want to be able to track all of us and then see how well we're doing against each other. So how do we do this? So let's have a look. One way is if there was only uh, like a, the initial way I was thinking, I was like, oh, maybe we can just add in predicted player one and predicted player two. We'll just attach that onto the, uh, onto the bracket. And so that would be the new bit of the graph, the, the bit that's highlighted kind of in pink slash purple down here. So we've got this extra relationships connecting um, to some players. The problem is it doesn't actually work if we want to do predictions for multiple users. So like if I wanted to do, I mean, I suppose you could like add in predicted player one, Mark, predicted player one, Alex, predicted player one, Michael, but then it's kind of, you're sort of embedding like the name of a person inside the relationship type and it would, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really work particularly well the, the more users you want to add. So that's not really like a very generic solution to the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, so Michael and I were talking about this and he was like, well, effectively you've got, you want to be able to shadow the brackets. So you've got the bracket and then you've got the shadow brackets. So that's where the idea of the shadow graph comes from. So let me show you what it looks like with the shadow brackets. So the shadow brackets now in red. And so we have like semifinals is one bracket. So semifinals in the Australian Open is one particular part of that uh, draw. And then we've got a shadow bracket, which is like my prediction for that particular part of the draw. And so what we've got here, all these bits highlighted in uh, in purple, those are the, the shadow bracket, like the, they're effectively a copy of the other part, 
uh, of the model, but they're for our predictions rather than the actual one. And so you can see we put in, we connect it to the uh, actual bracket itself up here, and then we can make our predictions. We can say, my prediction is player one is going to be Sinner, player two is going to be Medvedev. Uh, it, you can see down here, it's got the users, so that's me, and that's my shadow bracket, my other shadow brackets over here. And I'm saying it's going to be Alcaraz and Zverev. I actually got this one. This one is completely wrong. Uh, the actual result is up here. So Berrettini Nadal. And then down here, I've got one of them correct, right? So I've got Medvedev in the right place, but I but Sinner is in uh, the wrong place. And players can only go, once you get to a particular round, they can only go to one part of the draw. Like you can't just suddenly go, hey, I was going along this path and then suddenly end up down here. So, so it's, 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 it's a little bit simpler uh, than you might imagine. So, so that's, the, that's the, the graph modeling technique that we've done. And then... How would we go about actually um, querying it? Uh, so this actually gets uh, gets a bit more complicated than what we started as. So we have like, hey, this is find my user. Um, so find my this is like my uh, auth author code. Uh, look up, look me up, and then what I want to do after that is we're going to find the tournament, find all the events that are part of it, and then get all the brackets. Um, so those are all the all the like parts of the draw. So this is like doing a query to find. For the Australian Open 22, men's singles, and then bracket, uh, uh, each bracket has a rank, so I could order them. So like, uh, I think I started from the fourth round. So the fourth round was zero, the quarterfinal was one, the semifinal was two, and, uh, and so on. So I was just like, find the semifinal and beyond. So that gets us, so this query here, so find me, find all the brackets that are semifinal or above, and then we get the optional bit, because we don't, like at some point, like at the beginning of the tournament, we don't, we might not have predicted anything, and we uh, wouldn't have the result either. So we kind of got all, lots of optional parts to it. So we've got to get the player one, player two for each bracket. And then we connect the bracket to the shadow bracket and to the user. So that's what we're doing in the middle here. So connect my shadow bracket to the shadow bracket for me. So I remember user is me up here. Get the shadow bracket, connect it to the bracket. So that gets us just this one shadow bracket. And then the shadow bracket's connected to my predictions. Uh, and then you get back like the actual player, uh, player one, actual player two, my prediction player one, my prediction player two. And so we end up back at like what, what we had on that initial um, initial uh, JSON uh, file. So we've got uh, our prediction, the actual result, uh, and then for the fight, for the champion, it's kind of interesting because the, 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 this one, um, I only store player one for that because it's not, you know, because it's not really like a, there isn't, there isn't, <laughs> there isn't a player two when you're trying to say who won the, uh, the final, because uh, only one person can win it. So I just ended up like in this particular query. This just shows as not. Uh, and so yeah, that's the that's the modeling uh, technique. So just to conclude, um, it obviously adds some complexity to the graph, like putting this um, structure in. But it really does dig you out of a hole. Like I was kind of like trying to think, like how do you how do you do this? And I think this applies in like more than one thing, right? Like if you were trying to model like employment history, you could imagine like introducing like an extra uh, extra part of the graph. It's almost like a uh, the, the comp. It's like a composite uh, graph model. This is just a, a version uh, of that pattern. And if you need to connect, like in this case, it was users and players into like the same thing. So we could say, hey, these these predictions are mine, rather than these are just predictions. And this is a really uh, neat pattern to do it. Uh, and, and, and kind of as um, as a few of the other speakers have said, this is fun, right? Like coming up with this uh, is quite neat uh, and it and it solved our problem. And I know it's not been quite 15 minutes, but I am done. So uh, thanks very much. And if you want to find me, that's where I am. Cool, I'll hand back to you, uh, Alex, in case anyone has any questions. Uh... Cool. Thank you very much, Mark. That was quick. <laughs> you want me to answer so, this question in, yes, the, in yeah, the chat? Let's, let's, yeah, so let's John let's ask him, yeah. I don't understand what a shadow graph is. Is there a general introduction to explain shadow graphs? Well, no, there isn't because I just made up the term. <laughs> and it was effectively in this particular domain model, right? Remember we had, um, if we come back, so yeah. we come back, 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 back. Where do we go? So we had the concept of the bracket. And the only thing that really exists is the bracket, right? So we the, the bracket is who actually got to a particular position in the draw. So that's like this bit up here, the purple uh, and the blue. And then we're trying to layer on top of that, that Alex can have his version of that. I can have my version of that. Michael can have his version of that. So that's just the concept. Like we're effectively creating like a shadow copy of it. And there can be lots of copies. It does, I don't know, maybe there's a better name than, than, than shadow. Um, it's a that was it's, the, a, that was it's a digital on. twin of a digital twin. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a twin. I should have called it. Should have called it the bracket twin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, effectively, the graph sounds like, cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs>
dark and mysterious. Yeah. But apparently it doesn't take very long to explain either. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are you are a fast talker. So I, I think <laughs> you... Uh, I know, yeah. I've been told that for 10 years. One day, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we can do another question. How do you, from... Will says, "How do you generate the predictions?" I mean, I just, I just use my, I just guess very badly. <laughs> Is it a labeled node? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's like, there would be lots of these shadow bracket nodes uh, like around the graph. So there are nodes like for all the tournaments and all the predictions that I made. Each one has a shadow bracket node. Yeah, don't be shy with questions. Obviously, this is this is now your time. Uh Matt. Uh, uh Matt Stone, why player one and player two instead of something like yeah, I guess you could. Uh when I was doing it originally, I was trying to capture where exactly they were in the draw. So were they the first player or the second one? But yeah, I suppose it doesn't really matter. Yeah, as as, as I said, like they can't move, like they can only go into one part of the draw. So yeah, we could uh we could model it as um played and yeah, that would work as well. Uh, but I was trying to like make it like uh really like exact look exactly how it did um on the draw. Yeah, makes sense. Is it a subgraph? Yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah, it's a kind of subgraph, isn't it, right? We've got like a, a, a graph of the actual results and then we've got a, like a subgraph of our predictions. And so on this diagram, there's only my predictions, but we could add in like, if we had Alex's predictions, I guess maybe we could connect that to another part, uh, but they would all come into the same, uh, the same bracket. Like we're trying to capture multiple predictions of the same thing. Uh, can you show the code again? Sure. <laughs> Good luck if you can uh, if you can memorize this though. <laughs> well, we we will be sharing the slides, I guess, uh, afterwards, and uh, then yeah. you, you will you will be able to uh, to copy uh, copy that from there. So um, uh, yeah, I mean that's definitely uh, easy. Cool. So that's the, the maybe great. maybe you, sh you shared this uh, in the beginning, and sorry if I missed this, but the the data you. Is this is this public? Did, how how did you get to it? Is there? Oh, I mean, I mean, the data of the predictions is me like putting it in. I mean, I've done it all manually. I'm sure you could automate parts of it, but I've just got like a yep. little UI and I fill it in. Um, I see. Okay. Yep. So is it? No, 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 no. I mean, it is. It is running on. It's running on Aura. See, they get the plug in yep. there. Yep. Uh, so I've got a little app. It's deployed to Vassal. It then connects to Aura, um, yep. and it's and it's kind of just like just a, a React uh, app on top of it. Ah, the app. Where's the app? Where's the app? Uh, I can show you. Let's see if it. Uh, this is where I got it. Let's see. Let's see. This is now we've added like a, a layer of risk to the tool. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit small. See, uh, no, here we go. Yeah. Let's see how well this is gonna work. So yeah, like yeah, I know. Pick another one. So this is like oh, so this is like this is like another tournament uh, from the year. So this is this is this is what it does. It's effectively going and running queries against Aura, and then it's coming back and, and working out whether I got it right or not. Um, so for example, that's men's singles, women's singles. Uh, and I'm not doing anything clever. Like when I want to edit it, this is the mode if I want to go and like up, up, put in the result. And then if it if the tournament would be live, like this one ended like seven months ago, I would get another button um, next to it where I could go and uh, put my predictions until the tournament had finished. Are, are you betting on it? <laughs> No, I just wanted to see how bad I was because I always saw people doing these predictions. So I was like, surely I can do better than that. But yeah, like it's got like you can make a new event. Like I, I mean, this this isn't part of the talk, but yeah, this is what this is what is backing this uh, this model. Like the, this is all using a lot of this is using APOC uh, to do stuff. Um, so it kind of like you can create an event, create a date, like start date, end date, and it uses the start date and the end date to work out whether or not you're allowed to um, continue to do predictions or not. Um, I can't remember. I think I did US Open. Let's have a look. Yeah. But yeah, I'm generally not. <laughs> I'm not very good. Like other people are way better at this than me. So I shouldn't be betting. Don't encourage me to bet. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't. <laughs> That's not what we yeah. need to say. Uh, Michael says there's a repo. Yeah, there is. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, so I can share it with you. Uh... And this predictions. There we go. I will paste it into the chat over here. That's where it is. Oh, nice. I'll follow the best. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Z Zania was saying, yeah, like, I, I need to get more people to participate with me. Then I could see how bad I really am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, a, like a shared, uh, uh, you know, uh, almost like a, 
uh, enhanced version of this because then it would probably uh, you can feed an AI that gives in the end better predictions from all the knowledge from the people. Yeah. yeah. But everybody asks like do you do you have like some ML to work out? <laughs> no no no. Yeah, so provis like do you have an ML that's working out your predictions? It's not that clever. Like it's literally just me uh, guessing who I think is going to get there. Yeah, so Praveen there is there isn't any predictions like on the queries. I don't know whether that is maybe beyond like uh, what what I've done so far. Maybe there is a way that you could uh, that you could use it. But yeah, it's not. It's just purely manual. The data is manually entered. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now yeah. you filled up all the rest of the time. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's nice. I mean if you finish early, uh, we have some time for question. Is not always a given. But um, but yeah, this is this is always cool to interact as well with the audience and uh, with the speakers. So some some questions are always great to have. Obviously, we cannot promise that we will answer all the questions all the time. But yeah, that's cool. Um, cool. Well, thank thanks. you very much, Mark. Uh, I hope you are well. And uh, yeah, uh, stick around maybe a little bit more for uh, for notes. And I'll see you see you at another event maybe sometime. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Bye. Bye.